again. Um, let me just uh, get myself comfortable. So, a couple of things. Um, firstly, I think you will now see that this, the start of this video is very similar to the start of the last video and probably the start of the video before. What I am doing is putting out, I was going to say daily vlogs, but they're going to be more regular vlogs. Vlogs? While we are getting, while I am getting ready for this boat to sail. So essentially it's going to detail what I do on a daily basis just to get the boat ready. They are all going to be fairly similar. It just is going to go through the processes that I'm going through. So that's the first thing. That is going to be fairly samey, but... I think I want to show you what I'm doing. I hope to be setting off within about a week. So I've got literally less than a week. So every day I have a set of chores that I need to accomplish. And I will video what I do and hopefully it will allow you to pick up on certain things and maybe, you know, make your own checklists. So anyway, things to do today. Again, it all comes down to provisioning. I have to go and get gas today. I've got to get propane. I've got to fill the propane tank up. Number two, I have to go to West Marine and pick up extortionately priced bits and bobs. Although every time I go to West Marine, I normally walk out in a fit of peak because I'm so upset at the prices. That's the second thing I've got to do. And I've also got to accept some deliveries again from people. So hoping that all my deliveries that are scheduled for today turn up it really is um it really does depend on like the carriers so i am stuck here until my deliveries turn up so hopefully within a week um this is the last day that i will be on my own uh my friend shiner who you may remember from the bbi's episodes is flying in tomorrow night so he will help me prepare because really the list of stuff that I have to do is far greater than the time I have left. So having two on board will be, hopefully, um, he's kind of on a holiday, but it will help anyway. And there's things that I really can't do on my own, like lifting the dinghy and the outboarding. I kind of need to get all that done. So as soon as he arrives, there'll be someone else to keep me company, keep me out of mischief. Um, a couple of points of order that I just wanted to run through with you. Firstly, um, yes, I'm on my own. Teresa is coming back. She's, you know, I don't want everyone going, oh, where's she gone? She's gone. She's not coming back. She is coming back. She's coming back for the crossing. Just to reiterate, for those of you who didn't watch my scintillating video filmed in Sri Lanka, um, she has a job. She has a job in Melbourne. And when that finishes up, she will be back. So don't panic. I know that she's the pretty one and I know that I'm the not pretty one, but she's back with her smile and her humor. So there you go, so she's back. Number two, um, these are Cookie Monster pajamas. Uh, don't judge me. Um, anyway, so it's Thursday today, things to do. I will video them, show you what I'm doing, write lists and take it from there. So I'm gonna enjoy my coffee, make myself some breakfast and then get on. I'll see you soon. So another beautiful day in South Carolina. I'm actually going to be really sad to leave this place. It got to a point before Christmas where I just didn't, I kind of wanted to leave, but the weather was terrible. But now, you know, Charleston, it's not even spring, it's mid-February, but it's beautiful. It's, the temperature's lovely, the gnats. Anyway, so I need to go and buy a hydrostatic release for my life raft, for our life raft. If you're not aware, um, I have a big thing about life rafts, life raft positioning, and life raft release, life raft release. God, I can't even say it. But they have a two or three year, the hydrostatic releases have a two or three year shelf life. And although I went to this company yesterday to pick some bits up, it would appear that our hydrostatic release is now out of date. So I need to get another one. Essentially, a hydrostatic release is a piece of kit where if the boat were to sink so fast that I didn't have time to release the life raft, it would automatically pop up when it got to a certain depth uh, below the water. I, I kind of hope that we would never ever be in that situation where things happen so quickly, but you never know. And 
as I say in just about all these instructional videos, when I have a piece of safety equipment, or two strap spanners, or multiple sets of tools, or to, you know, multiple spares, it's more for my own peace of mind than for the actual practicality of it. I suppose it's like having a life vest on an airplane. Do you know, the number of times you need a life vest on an airplane are, are, are small, but you know, when you need it, you need it. Um, anyway, so yeah, off to go and get this thing sorted out. So one of my chores, first stop, get the hydrostatic release. Second stop, go to the Chandler. And third stop, go and get some more provisioning. So there you go. with our marine heads I am now getting a service kit for the unit now look I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make too many bones about this but I whine I'm British and I whine and things that annoy me number one chandlers that rip people off okay so I'm annoyed number two toilets that break down every 10 seconds Realistically speaking, I actually think that I have a solution to all the plastic in the oceans. Now, here's the thing. If a certain manufacturer of marine toilets and pumps were to make all the plastic bottles, we wouldn't have a problem because they disintegrate in a couple of years and there wouldn't be any more pollution in the seas. However, moving directly away from that, that digression, I take huge huge issue with this one thing and it's my biggest bet noir and sometimes I'm so glad Therese isn't here this is a service kit for our toilet there are five o-rings in here a couple of little bits of plastic and three screws eighty five dollars eighty five dollars and they've got you over an absolute barrel because if you don't buy their eighty five dollar service kit your toilet stops working. So, I, I, it just, it, it, it drives me absolutely insane. Anyway, so $85 for a service kit, um, some screws to put some stuff together, I need to buy some bungee, and then after that, I need to go and get the gas bottle filled up. So those are the things I need to do now. Okay, so there we go. So two-stroke oil I've purchased, spark plugs I've purchased to service the outboard, I need to get some fishing lines, some fishing bits. Those are things that I do enjoy doing, and then we'll move on to more. My continual I'm just griping I'm just a I'm just a whining little bitch today but seriously uh, uh, me look, I, I, I just I think charging a hundred dollars for some washers and some o-rings is just criminal that jabs go I'm just gonna call you out on this you are just a shower of f an absolute shower of f I understand product development and all that but you know, your Jabsco Marine Toilet has been around for, for like years. You are just ripping people off. You are, you're just ripping people off, a hundred dollars. So yeah, look, I am fully aware that I whine a lot, but I don't know. I, I can't help but be convinced that spending a hundred bucks on a service kit for a manual toilet that breaks down every six months to a year it's just it's just a ripoff like a hundred bucks for a service kit it's crazy it's cr eleven a.m. I am down to the last of my three chores for this morning which is the uh, runabouts I've got to do so when to got the hydrostatic relief for the life raft I have been to the West Marine Chandlers to be ripped off and now I've got to go and get my propane refilled so I'll get that sorted out then lunch, then I'm gonna kick back.
so yeah it's kind of like south carolina it is super humid super hot love it here but humidity gets to you by about lunchtime so there you go so one of the things that i love about south carolina is sometimes the absolute grittiness of it and none more so than stanley's propane place so this is essentially an abandoned fuel station and this chap called Stanley who fills propane tanks um, so I turned up to get my propane filled problem is that there doesn't seem to be anyone here it's completely abandoned the TV's on oh here comes Stanley so hello can I get a fill up please yeah yeah thank you mate but he's a lovely bloke um, I'm kind of scared of propane as you probably rightly should be so thank you I think it's about half full but I think it's 40 thank you I love the smell of propane in that morning I think that will you <laughs> thanks mate all right, I'll come in and settle up with you. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you, man. You have a good day. How long you owned this place for? I'm just filming. Shit, we've been here almost um, we're over 27 years now. Yeah. 27 years. Yeah, we gotta do a lot of repairs. <laughs> yeah, don't we all, mate? I've got these repairs on my own body. Listen, yeah. thank you so much. Right, thank have you. a you lovely day, mate. So, last show of the day, full propane tank. I won't actually use the propane for cooking until we are offshore i'll obviously check that it works but i've got a little um little electrical convection hob which i will use just to preserve gas and the reason is that i only have one tank for propane i've got two butane tanks but you can't fill butane in the us easily i've yet to find a place that does so i have to swap over to a propane tank all right come on back in the back in the little hole 